Hi everyone and welcome to Empowerment Through Intuition. Tonight's show is all about opening the third eye. And Chris is with me. She's just in my ears because of technical difficulties again with Webinar Jam. And I'm using their name to let you know, never use them. I'm tired of their problems. <laughs> uh, you definitely don't want to be using that program. So tonight we're going to be doing opening um, the third eye. And there are a whole bunch of different categories and things that Chris and I want to explain to you. And as more of you guys pop on, I'm going to remind and let you know what I just said again, but give it a few moments for a few more of you so I don't keep boring you with repeating stuff. But in the meantime, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on. New Jersey definitely won. There is no way tonight, even if Texas got like 100 votes, so it's going to outdo New Jersey. So at this point, I am looking in places in New Jersey. Uh, we might actually be able to go to Stockton College, Stockton State College. Um, they're talking with us. So we're looking into a few places there. And as soon as it's all lined up, guys, we're going to let you know. Uh, and Chris is on. So guys, you see Chris in the feed? She's saying hi, everybody. She's in my ear tonight. She's going to help me read the feed from where she's at because where I am, um, the feed goes really quick and I can't always go back on it. So Stephanie, Diane, Aaron, Holden, Lisa, you guys, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, and once again, yay, New Jersey. Yes, Tina, you guys won. <laughs> uh, once again, never use Webinar Jam. That's why we can't see Chris tonight, but she is here. She's on the feed and she's in my ear. So I'm going to get started and really talk about what it means, first of all, to open the third eye. Everybody's like, oh, open your third eye, open your third eye. Opening your third eye is a step beyond intuition. Intuition is, uh, we talk about empowerment through intuition. We talk about using it. It's a, a major guiding force in your life. It can make such a difference for you. But opening your third eye is actually more psychic it's more forceful what's going on is you are opening a portal to the other side as and chris said it's like putting a telescope into another realm and you have got to be sure you know exactly what you're doing see she's setting up little hearts because she likes what i'm saying <laughs> you have got to be so prepared if you are going to attempt these strategies we talked about tonight and so prayed up because when you open these portals and actually step in either peek in or step into altered realities that is where really dangerous stuff can happen as well as beautiful good stuff but we're just putting that out there please be way way prayed up before you attempt this stuff make sure you have no anger in you if you have some um issues going on with somebody clear them out say some prayers again for those of you just joining us opening your third eye is much more than intuition this is powerful psychic type of work so with that um Holden says, believe you will be safe and you will, whatever you believe is what will happen, like attracts like. Okay, Holden, this time I completely disagree with you. Like attracts like. And yes, you can open that other side, you can open that door and just know you're going to be safe. But what you don't know is what is going on with you subconsciously. Or you don't know that that anger and resentment you have toward a particular parent or sibling or work uh, co-worker is also vibrating within you. And when you open those kind of doors, whatever you're vibrating is going to attract. So you might be vibrating light, but you, or you might be vibrating something negative and you're thinking everything's good, everything's good. You have to be careful with the whole thing of like attracts like, and if you think it, that's so, yes, that's true, but it's also like whipped cream on a pile of poo. 
if you are a pile of poo and you are not vibrating in the right place, no matter how much whipped cream you put on top of it, it's still poo. So no, I disagree with you on that one, baby. And I'd love when you share. So you keep going, going because that was a very important point and I'm happy we got it out there. Hey Adele, hi Shauna. And hey, I'm gonna say hi, Chris. <laughs> Just for uh, so she's chattering in my ear. So if you have a specific question for Chris that you'd like her to address, you just go right ahead because we're going to this is how we're going to do it tonight. In fact, she, she just, I wish you could hear it, guys. She says she's the spirit from the other side. <laughs> okay, so what do Chris and I both do before starting uh, opening up our third eye? Again, opening our third eye is greater than just using intuition. It is a psychic skill. We both are absolutely clear, clear our conscience. We make sure we're in a safe, we make sure we're in a good place. Uh, and we pray and we pray and we pray. And then we ground. Grounding is an absolute positive requirement. Uh, why? Uh, Chris, why would you say grounding is so important? Because me, go ahead. The, right. The quality and the clarity that you want comes from grounding. And why did I ask Chris? I hate grounded. <laughs> and so does she, okay? Because when you're grounded, it's you what we're learning, believe it or not, Chris and I are still learning. I mean, you're always learning. We are really learning how important it is to be grounded. Elena and Barbara are great. They're always telling us you go, you're not grounded, you're not grounded, and they're grounding us um, and having us do exercises. When you're grounded also, believe it or not, you can reach further out into other realms. It doesn't make sense. You would think that your feet are stuck here so you can't go as far, but it's the opposite. You actually can stretch further when you're well grounded and you do get a better clarity. Why do we not like grounding? It's, it's a more happy place to be when you're not, when you don't really put yourself on this earth, you don't really settle in. I mean, it has its, it does have its drawbacks. We might not be as connected with people around us because we're not solidly in this place. At least that's how I, I feel it. Um, I can't put words in Chris's mouth. Chris, do you want to throw some words into that? Why do you not always ground? <laughs> she would rather play with the angels particularly versus people, nothing personal, but when given a choice, she prefers the angels. And yeah, you don't usually play with angels when you're grounded. So um, it's, it is a whole, there's a whole debate when you have people like, yeah, well, there's, there's a whole, Chris is saying there's a whole nother dimension available when you're not grounded. And that's where the debate comes in. I'm with Chris. But we do also see how great Elena and Barbara, and when they get us to ground, we really do seem to be able to stretch further. But we do, and we shine better. We know all of that. But I mean, it, it, there's a give and take to anything. It's like, hey, I, I was going to use ice cream as an analogy, and I just forgot what my analogy was. So never mind, guys. Chris would say if she could take a cloud break versus sitting in her rocker, she's taking a cloud break. So that being said, though, we do make sure we are grounded when we're opening the third eye because now we are talking about doing something very intense. <sighs> I can hear people saying, wait a minute, Chris talks to angels. How much more intense can you get? Um, it can get much more intense. Uh, there are, there's so much information available through these portals. So um, you need to be secure and strong. So we do pray. And this is when Chris and I really do intentionally grant ourselves. Now there's several techniques. Any of you guys can use any of these. Um, 
Yeah, Shauna, she's, Chris is on my Bluetooth right here, guys. So she's talking away with me. So feel free to ask a question of her. Um, are we supposed to be hearing Chris? No, sweetheart. Um, we're going to figure out how to fix that. Oh, and just real quick, webinar jam, don't use them. Don't use them. I'm so tired of this garbage that happens with that technology. I'm going to demand a refund tomorrow. And yet another program is knocked off our list. We'll figure it out. We'll get Chris back on by next week, I promise. So grounding. Go outside in your bare feet in the sand. I, well, the grass. Everybody does the grass. I do the sand. You put me, that's why I said sand without even thinking. Chris said grass. Um, but I love the sand, man. I bury in the sand and the water's coming over my feet in the ocean. There is nothing more grounding. I'm like, shoom, right here. It feels great. But doing bare feet in the grass, same thing. So it doesn't matter if you live in the city. Go to the park. Go to the section where the dogs don't walk. Take off your shoes and walk around. It really helps. Nature really helps ground you. Tapping under your eyes like this. This is your stomach meridian. Believe it or not, when you're tapping on your stomach meridian, don't ask me why, you could feel yourself getting grounded. St anything stainless steel, like a spoon or uh, any kind of utensil, but it must be stainless steel, guys. Can't be silver. Can't be the new stuff that they're making utensils out of. Rub that on the bottom of your feet. That's like so cool. It's like you can literally feel yourself being pulled right down and grounded. And it's very comforting. It's when I do it, I feel like I'm massaging myself. Um, and meditating. Meditating will ground you. Now, some of you who meditate with me in the morning or throughout the day, listen to the meditations, are probably like, what? I'm pretty loofy when I get done. Yeah, you are, but you do get grounded. And thank you as I'm shooting up those hearts. I know you're my meditation, guys. Oh, Paula, hi, you sweetie. Um, so those are ways of grounding, and they're really important. So before I share with you how Chris opens up her third eye, or I open up my third eye, I just wanted to be clear, prayer and grounding are absolutes. Um, Okay, I want to scan. Chris, you scan. Oh, no, that's yours. I'm going to talk about yours shortly. I just wanted to cover the two things that the both of us do clearly. So, and I mean, and that's what everyone needs to do. Now, I'm going to tell you how Chris opens her third eye. I'm going to tell you specifically how I open my third eye. And then I'm going to tell you some other techniques that other people use that you can open your third eye. But you use no technique, guys, unless you are grounded and you're prayed up, prayed up with protection. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, gosh, guys, best, best prayer of protection. So simple. Everybody knows it. Everyone's been to, you know, Sunday school or Bible class or something. And if you don't know it, just Google the Lord's Prayer. It is the most powerful prayer of protection. All right, I'm going to take a two-second commercial break. And I'm going to encourage all of you to grab your cell phones and type in the phone number 22828. 22828. Chris, would you type that in? Yeah, I think I could type that in. I want you guys to type in 22828. That is the call number. And I want you to type in the word advance notice. If you put advance notice into 22828, it's going to send back welcome. Please give us your email. When you put that in, it's going to say thank you. If you send us your advance, you want to be on the advance notice list you will be told at least a week ahead of any other marketing. Just if you're on our email list, you're not getting, you're not on our advanced list. The email list will get this notice a week later. The advanced list is Chris and I, and Elena are doing classes. They have been established. We know just what we're doing, uh, but we are only opening it to 30 people. Why am I only opening it to 30 people? Or why did we 
as the three of us decide that that was the max, it's because of how much we're doing. I mean, we're going to be offering six weeks worth of classes, each of us. These classes uh, will include personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you're going to have a minimum of two hours with me one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have a minimum of an hour with Chris. I believe Elaine is more than two hours because she's going to be teaching Reiki one. Um, free admission to any of the conferences that we have, which we are definitely doing one in September. There's one coming up. There's so much. I don't want to get into all of it now, but because it's only open to 30 people, we wanted to give you guys who listen to us all the time. Uh, no, no, don't type it into the feed, guys. You're typing it into the feed. You have to type that into your cell phone. 22828 is the phone number. Advanced notice is the text message. So this is a text message system. Okay? So if you want to enhance your intuition, you want to get those clear answers when you need it, you want to stop missing the messages that are in your mind and getting confused, use that intuition on demand and mostly help other people with it. You want to be on this advanced list so you don't miss out. All right. That was my commercial. And we're going right back to how Chris opens, and I've seen Chris do this all the time, how Chris opens her third eye. She actually uses oil from the Padre Pio shrine. So it's been blessed through the Padre Pio shrine. And she puts it on the front of her throat, the back of her throat, her crown, and her two wrists. Now, I always understood third eye, duh. She says, yeah, I forgot the most important one. No kidding. Sorry, guys. I always understood the throat, the front, the back. It made sense because that's our will center. And a lot of, you know, it's put, giving God the free, turning my her free will over to God's free will. Third eye, obviously, because you're opening up such a powerful portal. Crown, same reason. You're opening up a powerful portal. But I asked her tonight, I said, Chris, I always saw you do the wrist, and I never really thought, why do you do the wrist? And she says that's because the energy comes in on one side and out the other. And under no circumstances does she want it to get stuck or blocked. So she's blessing those areas too. So that the energy and the information flows freely. Now, while she's doing that, she usually turns to St. Michael for assistance. And she prays for, I have to keep... Um, peaceful Chris give it to me again peaceful presence no harm to come to me or or come from me so she prays that no harm goes from her or comes to her okay no harm comes to me or from me and she prays for this with grace peace and happiness so that's how Chris prepares herself when she opens up her third eye. So grounding prayer and that holy uh, oil process that Chris uses while at, while making it clear her intention. So this hold in is where intention matters. So she's going in there with no poo and her whipped cream is no harm coming from me, no harm coming to me. That's her intention. That's what she's going to attract. Uh, the way I open my third eye is I have two different ways. One is sun gazing, but I use I can't say that's how I open my third eye. That's how I strengthen my third eye. Um, and I when I do say sun gazing, I don't mean staring at the sun. There is there's a belief that you can stare at the sun during sunset or sunrise, and it will help the third eye. Possibly, I don't do that. I close my eyes and I face the sun and wherever, wherever it is in the sky, I don't limit it to sunrise or sunset. And I feel the energy, the heat, the power of the sun coming through and clearing my third eye and strengthening it. But as I'm feeling that energy, I am thinking the sun, S-O-N. You know, I'm facing the S-U-N. 
So I'm very, in, my intent is very much on the Son of God feeding me through the sun in the sky. Um, but how I open, when I'm about to open, if I, somebody wants something that's much more intense than just a simple intuitive reading, um, I need to travel somewhere, I need to get really vital information fast, I use sound vibration. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can use a singing bowl that it fits a vibration that makes your head feel like it's rattling slightly. Um, my bells don't quite do it, but this is, I, they get a small, I get a small vibration that is good enough, but I prefer something more powerful. So I don't want to carry a bowl around and I don't clean my bell. So I use, um, but I use, um, and I make sure I'm not umming from my chest or umming from my stomach. So try it, guys. Take a deep breath and just um and feel it vibrating in the top of your head. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm vibrating, and it's not even vibrating in my jaw. It's all up in here because that's where the pineal gland is. The pineal gland is just below the crown and between our third eye, and that's where it hangs. And it's the pineal gland that controls the third eye. So you want to vibrate it. By vibrating it, it's, it's like, whoop, hello, and it opens. So try it. Um, and don't worry about opening way up right now because it really does take some practice. But I want you to feel what I'm talking about and throw in any questions after you give it a try. So one more time, take a deep breath and everybody give it a whirl. Mm. The problem with me doing it is I'm now really goofy because I'm leaving. <laughs> okay. I all right. I'm open now. So guys, <laughs> Chris wants to know what the lottery numbers are. I will not ask. I should share a really cool story, guys. Uh why I won't ask for the lottery numbers, because I really know I would get them. I have no doubt. Um, in the state that my mind is right now, I could step over and and get those numbers. I can assure you they will not come from a wholly good source, but I would get them. I can assure you to have that kind of money come in all of a sudden would, um, would probably devastate my family in some way. Alcohol, drugs, carelessness. I mean, it would never make it to the next generation well because it was not gotten in a way that I should have received. Uh, it is not my, my uh, path in life to receive a lottery. So if I take what is not mine, it will not be rewarding. It will be devastating. And somebody said, well, prove you can do it. Just give it to charity. Don't tell anyone. If it's ever discovered that I made that kind of money and I didn't turn it over to my family, gave it to charity wouldn't you be pissed at your mother think about it mom made several million dollars or hundred million dollars and never didn't even pay off your mortgage that you'd be so angry no so i will not do it i don't have to prove to anyone i just am telling you why i don't do it so that's how right chris is laughing at me she's like you're so funny She's got a pen and paper ready. She still wants me to give her. She's like, I'll take the numbers. No, it's against her path too. She's not getting them. Or Adele or anybody else. Okay. So real quick, if you want advance notice, um, you want one week advance notice to the limited class of 30 people, use your cell phone, not your computer. Use your cell phone and text to 22828. The words advance notice, altogether no space, advance notice, 22828. You will be notified a minimum of one week ahead of everybody else on our, on our email list. And our email list is pretty substantial, so we do expect those 30 seats to fill relatively quickly. 
So we want to give you guys first shot if you think you're interested. So please make sure you do that and you're on that list, okay? Uh, Diane, hi, welcome. Have a, I love seeing her. It just brings back old memories of my father's restaurant. She was uh, one of the dancers. <laughs> okay, any questions, Chris, come up on the feed that I, that because I'm so busy talking, I'm assuming you're reading them. Oh, how cute. So Chris is answering the feed, not giving me a chance to take a break. She's just going to let me keep going. Okay. Um, share some of the questions with me, though, Chris, please, so I can also jump in. <laughs> She's telling me everybody wants the numbers. Okay. No, you're not getting them. You're right. Okay, so Chris is saying use sandalwood if you don't have Padre Pio oil. But what I do, what I would say too, is say a blessing on it. Whatever you use, say a prayer on it. If you're, uh, if you have a pastor, a priest, get it blessed. Um, when us girls would pray, we used to have a prayer group that physically met. We use loads of crystals, but every one of those crystals were blessed by my priest. Uh, at my church. I mean, I just wasn't going to be comfortable without them being blessed. And so get it blessed or bless it yourself. You absolutely can. Nobody's blessed this except me. And I love this. This is, was given to me by a good friend, Barbara. And it's a wonderful crystal. It's actually selenite, which usually doesn't is not smooth and nice like this. But oh my God, I love it. It just it absorbs such so much negative energy and it's very comfortable to hold. It, it's a great vibration. So uh, Chris says, if I put it in the sun, it would vibrate. And it, they do. They, I leave all the crystals on my windowsill because I face the morning sun. It's beautiful. So the crystals always get recharged. But this little guy has had holy water on it, a strong prayers from me often i mean because i hold it when i'm meditating not the morning meditations but when i'm in my own meditations um they're just fabulous and on that note people do use crystals to open their third eye so this is a great lead into the next part now when you're using a crystal you have got to um make the crystal your own and chris in um the courses where she's going to be teaching in her module, she's actually going to go through the process of how do you make a crystal your own. But um, I could just simply say I absolutely pray, bless them, but there's more to it. But you can, uh, she'll get into all of that with the classes. You can use amethyst, uh, alexandre, uh, blue, a pot, Chris, I'm probably butchering this one. Blue, a pot, a pot thigh, is that how you say it? No, the blue, a, right, blue or red aventurine, but there was a blue something that you were telling me that you can use. She forgot. <laughs> These are common crystals found in almost any crystal or rock shop which is why Chris wanted you to know those. So Amethyst of Alexandria, the blue or red, uh, Adven Ad Adventurine. So um, they're real, and they're really good for helping you to, you would hold this crystal to your third eye when you're meditating, and that will help it open. And, and taking uh, a cleansing bath with them. Get, what's the question? I... Oh, definitely. All right. So Melissa, we're reading your question. Uh, hello. Sometimes I'll have my physical eyes closed, but I can see other things. Sometimes just flashes, other times bright colors. Would this be my third eye opening? Yes. <laughs> Chris, you agree? 
Yes, Chris agrees. It is. It's the beginning of the opening. Um, so make sure colors are really common. In fact, you can have your eyes closed and like see vivid colors. That's how it started for me. Um, I would see these unbelievable vivid colors. I'd open my eyes and see nothing. <laughs> um, it, the move. No, I don't know. Chris is saying it's like the commercial with the matrix in it. I don't know what commercial she's referring to. Oh, she's saying how they slide from world to world and it lights up like a big web. Yeah, you know what, Chris? That if, I don't know what you're saying. I haven't seen it, but that the commercial, but I, I get what you're saying. It is. There's a lot of lights involved, guys. There's a lot of connections going on. Um, and there's a lot of information that's going to start pouring through. Also, when you, uh, Melissa, you might find, especially in the beginning, a lot of pressure in the front of your head, almost like a headache. You are taking in more than you should be. You just want to back up a little bit. Take a deep breath and just say, okay, I'm releasing whatever's there. I'm letting it go. And I only want what will serve me in this moment or what will serve the person who needs an answer in this moment. And then allow it to come back in again because you can really over, like get overloaded quickly. Even Chris and I get overloaded. Um, it's not a matter of skill. It's just there's so much out there. And you know, you open it, it's like taking a plug out of the bottom of a pool. It's all going to just start gushing out. It's not going to take its time. So if you don't want to get it all gushing out at once, you have to be very specific. So you just loosen the plug. Don't actually pull the plug. So it comes at you in a stream. Okay. All right. Hey, no. All right, Hayden wants to know any colors that come to your eyes when you close them comes from your third eye. Well, any colors? No. Sometimes it's just for, if you were in bright lights and you close your eyes and you see other lights. It depends on the situation. If you're in meditation, then I would say yes. If you have the intent of opening your third eye in the moment, then yes. But very often we can close our eyes and see... Um, um, colors simply because we were exposed to bright lights or uh, we were watching a television show or we were staring at a piece of art and that color is still in our mind. So, Chris, do you agree? She calls it residue. It's residue. Yeah, it's a great, great way to explain it. It's like residue. Ashana, I think I've been getting flashes of light off and on through the day. Is that related? Oh, I think I know what you mean. Um, that like all of a sudden there's a, a flash of a bright flash of light right there, and then at another time there's a bright flash of light over there. I mean, it's just a real quick twinkle. I call them God lights. It's God that or the divine. It is. It is the angels. It's them letting you know they they're aware of you you're there so yes that's like opening the third eye honey because you don't see angels without opening your third eye um chris am i correct in saying that yeah she's saying if you don't have your third eye open you're not seeing angels and so those yeah and be careful what you are saying because remember now angels are also fallen angels they are not just good angels. So when you're opening that third eye, there are angels. But you got to be real specific as to who you're communicating with, which is why the intuitive footprint, understanding what is sourcing the information that's coming to you. If you can't sense what's sourcing it and you're relying on your feelings, you can get in trouble big time really fast. So um, that's where I would strongly suggest a module that I'm going to be teaching on intuitive footprints. you got to be able to distinguish evil, anger, energy versus good energy. Everything is 
energy on the other side. It is not sight. It is not, I mean, there is sight. We see things, we smell things, we taste things, but it is what is sourcing it. It's that energy that is really creating it. And you want to know that the energy that's creating it is safe. And so those flashes, yes, they are uh, God lights. They are definitely opening. And Nilda says, I have seen flashing lights, but they are mainly light blue color. Oh my gosh, that makes me immediately think it's Our Lady. Uh, for those of us who are Catholic, that would be the Blessed Mother. Nilda, I don't know if you're Catholic, but that would be Our Lady. And you don't have to be Catholic to know there is a divine feminine side. Um, you know, so it would be the divine feminine side. But, you know, I'm real staunch Catholic, so I have to go with it's Our Lady. <laughs> um, so another way to open your third eye, and I'm going to jump to Carla's question in a second and Diane's, but another way people use to uh, open their third eye is to, this happens spontaneously. A way that it happens spontaneously is often when you're doing something rhythmic. Um, you could be vacuuming. It's brainless. Your brain, your mind isn't wandering. You're just sort of humming along and just going with the movement. It's not really mindfulness. It's not really any kind of thinking. It's just a rhythm. You could be in your gardening and you're just pulling the weeds. You're in a relaxed state. And you're just moving in a rhythmic way often your third eye will open. And that can happen without you intentionally wanting it to or not. And then all of a sudden you got this information, you got this insight, you all of a sudden know something's going on. Um, it's like, and you're like, wow, that's interesting. I wonder why I thought of that. Well, you thought of that because the information came in, you opened your third eye. Uh, or a relative on the other side was like, yay, they opened, let me tell them, don't forget to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, uh, Diane, I studied yoga and yoga meditation in high school and discovered my third eye. This was many, many years ago. Yeah, yoga is another way of opening up your third eye. That is another um, process. And you, once it's open, it's not really hard to reopen. And uh, I know you're saying it's many, many years ago, but that doesn't mean it's not easily accessible. It's like riding a bike. Once you get balance, you've got balance. Once you understand how to open that third eye, you can open it. But please, guys, again, remember grounding and being prayed up because it can be dangerous. Uh, and the last way that Chris and I want to share with you that people use to open their third eye, again, this isn't necessarily techniques we use, uh, but you can, is to just stare, uh, but in a quiet way, like, you're in a relaxed gaze and you just keep looking at one spot with a relaxed gaze and a quiet mind. Um, in my second book, The Science of Intuition, I talk about relax and step back. It's that type of mindset where your body knows to go into this complete relaxed state. Your personality steps back and you just gaze and allow you just in that place if you've said your prayers and you um, have a clear mind information will start flowing that third eye will open up you'll you might even start seeing images coming at you even though your eyes your these eyes are open you will start seeing it doesn't matter it's it's a very i use that often when i'm when i used to read people when i would um do psychic fairs or how people raise money by doing readings and stuff like that for different organizations. That is a real simple way of doing it when you're in public, you know, and you will often see Chris gaze out and go away when she's in the show. Does she ever stare at the camera? No, she's busy gazing off. Why is she gazing off? Because then when she does that, she can see the angels, her third eye opens, they're sitting there telling her X, Y, Z. So she's always looking away and just gazing. Right, Chris? Yeah, I'm cheating, she says. She's not cheating, that's Chris. Carla, the lights around you, Nora, as you talked about flashing lights dimmed 
around you a couple times did I? I didn't even realize that call <laughs> that's kind of funny because in this room this, this is stage uh lighting it doesn't really flicker so that's interesting that's kind of cool thanks for pointing it out um so i really want to say one more time use your cell phones in your cell phone uh text 22828 Text the word advance notice without any uh, space and you will get onto our email list and be notified at least one week ahead of our massive email list. We are only opening these spots to 30 people. And the reason mostly that we're only doing it for 30 people is because of how much one-on-one -on -one time we're going to spend with you. We want to make sure you get the quality that we want to give you. We really want to bring you up to the level of being able to use your intuition to help other people. I mean, so obviously if you're at a level where you can help other people, you're at a level where you can help yourself too. Uh, and no longer have any fear about it and feel secure and being able to pull it up on demand. So in order to do that, uh, we just feel it's best to limit the seats. But because you guys are with us all the time, we want to make sure you get first notice. So do that, 22828, advance notice in the text message, and uh, we'll make sure you know before the main group. So any other questions? Uh, I found this really interesting. The only bad part is I only have Chris in my ears, so you guys aren't getting all the funny comments that I'm getting. <laughs> we... She's saying, she's saying she, you guys are getting her online. She's filling in a lot of stuff. I feel like I missed out because I didn't get to read the feed with you guys and Chris answered everything. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so her and Aaron are having a conversation about being short people. <laughs> Oh, so Melissa, Melissa, was it over her daughter's bed? Melissa in the feed was saying how she saw hundreds or thousands of little lights over her daughter's bed. Uh, yeah, that would definitely be angels. Um, and I remember, I don't know where I heard this. A, a thousand angels can fit on a pinhead. Because uh, in our dimension, I mean, these are mighty characters, mighty and big. But in our dimension, they only appear to us mere mortals as these little dots. Now, if you open your third eye, then you start to see them for what they are. And uh, you can see why we only see them as little dots over here, because it would scare the jeebies out of us if we had to deal with them all the time. We would all be really good people. Because it would be like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Um, I do want to say, I'm I'm not even going to count this week's city and states. New Jersey won. Congratulations, New Jersey. You are it. We are already in negotiations with a couple places in New Jersey. Uh, I'm kind of hoping Stockton allows us to use the Atlantic City campus. If not, they have a campus up in Pomona, um, not too far, it's sort of central. I am talking to them too. So we'll see, we'll let you guys know as soon as possible, as soon as we know uh, what we can do in New Jersey. <coughs> and uh, we'll get that out to you. And anybody who does sign up for our classes, you will be invited to any of the conferences we do for free. You will always be, you'll be our perpetual students for a year. We'll be doing another event in January or February. And again, you will be invited as our guest to that also. Because as far as we're concerned, you're our students, and we're, we're going to just take you in and hold you close. <laughs> so Laura's having a hard time. Is that what you said, Laura? OK, Laura Burris, I don't see it. But you're saying that you're having trouble opening up your third eye. OK, if you can give us a little bit more of uh, information as to do you do anything? Have you tried any of the techniques that Chris and I are discussing this evening? First, starting with the prayer, making sure you have a clear conscience, and 
By the way, guys, I don't have a clear conscience all the time. I mean, obviously not. I use that Ho'opono Opono that Chris and I talked about. And I asked the person, and I ask our Lord to please forgive me for not seeing them the way that they really are, but for children of God. Uh, please forgive me. I'm sorry. And then I say, thank you, and I love you. And I clear it up really quick. I mean, believe you me, there are some people I have to do that to every single time I'm going to open my third eye and get into more than just intuition, but actually into the heavy psychic stuff because I don't want that negative vibration around me. I don't want to be sending out. I'd rather have that person, you know, I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of people in this world that, hey, I'm never going to see eye to eye with. So I have to clear that before going in. So maybe you need to just clear some more of those vibrations, use the whole opono opono. And if you go to my YouTube station for Into Intuition, just go to YouTube, put in my name, Nora Tricello. There are three Ho opono opono meditations. Each one is less than 10 minutes. Listen to them. Powerful, awesome ways to get yourself set in order to do these meditations, to be in the right mind and frame of mind. And then you say your Lord's prayer, or you say another prayer that is meaningful to you, that connects you to the divine, connects you to God, and you will open your third eye. If you, now, now I'm gonna take Holden's advice. If you believe it's difficult, it's difficult. If you believe you can do this with grace and ease, you can do this with grace and ease. Um, but I, I do pull back on if you believe it's safe and everything is lollipops and ice cream, it's not. You can believe walking into the middle of the street is safe, but it's not. You'll get hit by a car if you're not paying attention. You know, the except the bus will come along, it's, you're done. You know, so you can believe what you want, but then there's reality. So that's why we have to be very careful about piling on beliefs on top of things that are just concrete realities. Okay, Carla, let's see. I read that wrong. Oh, yeah. Laura sees 1111 all the time. You know, we did, Laura, we did numbers not that long ago. 1111, I know the two mouse, and the master number is 11. I've been working on opening my third eye and I'm constantly seeing 1111, so Shauna, is saying the same thing. So I'm noticing there's a pattern here. Um, 11. Well, you know, it would be nice if you let me, you know, you'd let me know you're answering so I can join in too. I'm out of topic. So yes, 11 is a master number. And by the way, Chris and I are arguing. This has got to look really weird. It's like, a, like Nora schizophrenic tonight. <laughs> All right, guys, put in the feed. Right now, Chris, get your butt to Philadelphia when the systems don't work right. All right, everyone put that in the feed, please. I will start it off. Chris, get your butt to Philadelphia instead of Nora's ear. Okay, because this is crazy. You guys are missing out on the humor that we have with each other and the way we live the crap out of each other. It's important. It's all part of the show. <laughs> but 1111, yes, those are master. The 11 is a master number. So I do believe when you are seeing those, it is a sign for you that your uh, third eye is opening. It would not be a sign for me because 1111 means something to me. So. Uh, you guys really have to give it thought. If you feel that that's right, then that is right. Because your intuition is telling you that's what it is. So go with it. Uh, I, Paula, I love angels. They can come keep me company. I talk to them all the time. See, that's uh, Paula is Chris's sister. So are you surprised she talks to angels all the time? No. <laughs> Chris, get your butt to fill it out here. Thank you, Diane. Thank you very much. Anybody else, please? You know, Chris, we miss you. Chris, get your butt to Philly. Okay. All right. Instead of Nora's ear. Thank you, people. From now on, if there is computer difficulties, Chris has got to get her butt here. Chris, you are the other half. 
greatly miss you. See? And I know it is so much fun when we're together or at least on a split screen because then we can be humorous with each other. Right now, I'm just listening to a go and uh, I do enjoy it, but I feel like you guys are missing out. <laughs> well, are there any more questions? If not, I'm going to do a real quick wrap up or uh, thank you, sweetie. My husband says I look great. Um, <laughs> I am so blessed to have such a good man. It's 32 years. So that tells you. I had to think about it because she had to think about that, didn't you? Yes, I had to think about that. Uh, we both are very fortunate to have such good, strong, powerful men in our lives and in our children's lives. It makes a difference when you have a partner that you can really count on. And uh, we both do. But on that, when you're going to open up your third eye, I'm going to sum up. So any questions, guys, throw them in there in the meantime. Otherwise, we're going to end it. Go ahead. What, Chris? Oh, Diane said that a deer dumped and jumped in front of her son's car on his birthday, and the angels were watching after him. Of course, it wasn't an accident. Um, in our area, not Philadelphia, but right outside of Philly, man, that's a major issue. There's always accidents with the deers. So thank God. And that's wonderful. And that's just a real, um, you know, you have to say thank you. And it's nice to give some testimony out loud, to say it out loud, not be afraid to say thank you, God, to in a crowd of people. You know, I think if more of us did that, we would uh, bring God back into our lives that this country has kind of walked away from. Paula says, oh, Paula missed our live comedy show, so she's happy we're back. <laughs> it, it's seeing a purple eye normal when you look through your third eye. Uh, Aaron, that's interesting because yes, I often see purple when I'm looking through my third eye and you actually see an eyeball looking back at you. I do too sometimes. Very often, it starts off with this big eye looking back at me, which is probably why they came up with the name. I don't know. I'm sure that a lot of us have similar um, experiences. Uh, oh, Diane, the car was totally destroyed, but he is fine. Wow, that is real testimony. Uh, I'm sorry about the car, but thank God your son is fine. So summary, we pray and ground, okay, guys? So grounding several different ways. You ground with meditation. You ground with nature. You ground by tapping. You ground with stainless steel on the bottom of your feet. Prayer of protection. Chris always anoints herself first with the holy oil as saying her prayers. Me, I use sound vibration. The um in the top of my head, I make sure it vibrates to, to awaken my third eye. And I would have loved to hear if any of you did that when I was saying, let's do it together, how you felt. Did you feel like a little uh, wobbly? Did you feel like something occurred? So if you did take the deep breath and do the um with me and vibrate the top, throw in that feed and give me some feedback before the end of this. When we are done, we usually do say a prayer of thanksgiving. Um, it is not like we might not say it out loud when we're doing shows or when we're reading people. We don't make it obvious, but Chris and I never close down without being grateful and appreciative for what has come across. Um, Aaron, praise God, without him we are nothing. Amen. And Paula agrees, exactly, without God we are nothing. Christine, does opening up your third eye uh, woo, relate to Kundalini energy? Oh, girlfriend, so... Now I got to go back to my 22828 advanced notice because if you want to know about Kundalini, you really want to understand how to rise that energy. And yes, that's part of the third eye. That energy moves right up and comes across like a shepherd's hook. And that's the Kundalini. The Kundalini rises like a serpent and goes over and, and arches. And that's the uh, way it travels up our body. I will be doing the Kundalini inside of my modules because my meditations go into a very deep type of meditation. I talk about the Edgar Casey process, uh, what he, I use his 
methods. And believe you me, you will be rising the Kundalini and that will make the third eye open. It does a lot more than just open the third eye. Every chakra gets blasted open and it's like just boom, freeing, free, all this charge of energy. It's absolutely amazing. And some people warn against it, like, oh, don't do it. Don't, don't ever mess with the Kundalini. It can make you go crazy. It can do these horrible things. And yeah, it could if you weren't psychologically sound and you forced it open. We're not going to force anybody's Kundalini open. We're going to do it in a proper process. What was that, Chris? Oh, Nilda, thank you. So she did feel it in her head and she got a little wobbly. It does make you a little wobbly. It's kind of fun. Uh, but when you get that, that vibrating, that kind of wobbly, that's you're going to start opening it. You need to vibrate that pineal gland just enough to uh, awaken it. I mean, I, that's not the only way. Obviously, Chris's way and everybody else's ways work also. That's just my way. And I learned that again through the Edgar Casey Foundation. Um, John Van Alkins, oh my God, I love him. What a teacher. That man is amazing. Uh, and I learned a great deal from him. And that is that uh, he teaches Casey's techniques and it's the vibrating it. Uh, Shauna wants to know if I do a meditation for opening the third eye now. No, you can. Yes, in my in the if you want to sign up for the advance notice, if you sign up for my modules, my modules will you will be opening the third eye when you're doing the meditation. You it is a process. It's a whole Kundalini thing. Um, see, when we talk about opening the third eye, that's only one piece of the rising of the Kundalini. There is so much involved in that powerful force. But I'm doing a whole meditation series on the rise of the Kundalini, and that will be opening the third eye. We'll be doing quite a bit of meditation together in it. And most, I'm not exactly sure the whole format, but I believe part of the format will be like joint calls where we can share with each other and talk with each other. I don't have all the details worked out for my modules, but so the answer is yes, but not yes. Road trip to Virginia Beach someday. Yeah, Dave, someday we'll have our road trip, but we're not going to Virginia Beach. New Jersey won. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, but we, we also uh, talked about taking a road trip with Dave to wherever state won. Uh, yeah, Dave says, Chris, when I walk the neighborhood with the dog, I often find... 11 on the ground, 11 cents on the ground. Oh, that's so funny. There's 11 again, master number. I love it. I love it. Hey, guys. Uh, oh, Adele, thank you. She said she'll drive to Philly. I got to get away from these kids. I <laughs> said so she'll drive Chris to Philly the next time. The systems don't work just to get away from her kids. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap it up. One last time, 22828. In your text message, put advanced notice and you will be on our advanced notice list. Within probably two weeks, we will send out the first advanced notice. On the third week, we will notify everybody else. There are only 30 seats. Um, we love you. Chris loves you. Uh, we thank you. Chris thanks you. If you and uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week. And please visit our websites, christinegoganis.com and intuintuition.com. And sign up for our mailing list on Into Intuition page. You can click join me and you can just sign up right there for my mailing list. On Chris's, uh, chrisgoganis.com, you can just sign up for the list. Although the both of us share our list. So either way, you're going to get, you're going to get information. Uh, you guys have a great night. We love you. We thank you. And we ask God to bless you and to continue to bless our work together. Have a great night. Bye. Chris says good night, everybody. <laughs>